you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, it's Mr. T here, and we have another math tutorial tonight, or today we're talking about solving exponential equations and logarithm equations. So this is our second part in the series on logarithm functions. So we're going to solve two kinds of equations, exponential equations first, and then we'll talk about solving logarithm equations. For solving exponential equations, the first method we're going to use is we want to get the part of the expression that has the exponent by itself. And then we will take the log. Now we can use the natural log or we could use the base 10 log. It doesn't matter of both sides of the equation. And we'll use our log properties to simplify our expression and then solve for x. So I have one all worked out here, and then we'll work one together. So this would be our original problem here. So we want to get the e to the u, meaning the base to the u by itself. So I have to subtract 10 from both, both sides. So now I have this. So now I take the logarithm of both sides. Now in this case, it will definitely be easier to take the natural log. So if the base is e, use the natural log. If the base is 10, use the common log. Uh, if the base is some other uh, base, then it doesn't matter which log we use. Now on this side, we can use our log properties to bring the exponent in front. And we can also use the logarithm property that the lin of e is 1. So we end up on the left side with 0.1x. So notice by taking the lin of both sides, what we were able to do by this logarithm property we learned in the last video, we're able to get the x out of being an exponent and be a regular, in this case, linear variable. So now we just have to solve for x by dividing by 0.1. And then we can pull out our calculator and calculate the lin of 4 divided by 0.1 which is also 10 times the lin of 4. Uh, we didn't have to do this step here. And we get 13.86, approximately it's rounded. So if we put that number back into our original equation, it would check out. So let's look at another example. So we have one here. So we are going to get the expression with the exponent by itself. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Uh, 17. And now I'm going to log both sides. It doesn't matter which log we use here. And now we can use our exponent property to bring our exponent into the front times the log of 5. Now I need to get rid of this so I can divide by the log of 5 on both sides. And for most of you, you probably would want to go ahead and calculate that. And let's turn that into a decimal number here. So we've got here the log of 17 divided by the log of 5. So we have approximately 1.760. And now I would need to solve for x, so we're going to add 3. And then divide by 2. So again, I added 3. And now I'm going to divide by 2. And we get x is approximately 2.38. So again, if we put that number back into our original equation, uh, it should check out. Now, an alternative approach here, instead of logging both sides, is to convert our exponential function to a log function. So remember, if we write this as a log expression, the log will be base 5. 
And remember this 17 and this expression will change places. So this would be the log base 5 of 17 equals 2x minus 3. And to calculate this, we would have to use our change of base formula that we learned in the first unit. And that is precisely what we had uh, at this point once we divided. So we had here 2x minus 3 equals that, and then we solved. So again, we can take the log of both sides, or we can transform our exponential equation into a log expression. Now, another way of solving a different type of exponential functions is when we have exponential functions on both sides of the equation. Now, this method that we're going to do will only work when these two bases are, po are powers of the same number. In this case, both of these are powers of 2. So we need to convert both sides to have the same base. So 4 is 2 squared. And that's raised to the 3x power. And 8 is 2 cubed. And that's raised to the x plus 1 power. Now we can use the exponent rules that we learned in our last unit. So we're going to multiply those exponents. So 2 to the 6x equals. And here we've got to multiply 3 times that whole expression. And now, if we have two things that have the same bases that are equal, then that means the exponents must be equal. So we can equate the exponents. And now we can solve for x. And we get x equals 1. So again, this technique works when we have exponents on both sides of the equation. But again, these numbers for this method to work have to be powers of the same base. Okay, so that's it for, let's see, I have a, an application problem here for using ex, solving exponential equations. So we did compound interest back when we did uh, exponential functions. So we want to double our money. So it didn't tell us what our initial investment is. So we'll just use letters here. So our initial investment, so remember we're using this model for continuously compounded interest. But in this particular problem, we know or we were told that we want this amount to be double what we deposited. So 2p would be double what we deposited. And we were told that the interest rate was 0.08. And we want to solve that for t. So we have a exponential function. So we want to get the exponential part by itself. So that gives us this exponential equation. Now we could either log both sides or we can rewrite it as a exponential function. So let's take the logarithm of both sides. So we'll take the natural log of both sides. Now using our logarithm properties, the log of a base to a power just gives us that exponent. So the ln of 2. And then we would be dividing by 0.08. And if we bring our calculator in, we've got the ln of 2 divided by 0 0.08. And we get 8.7 years, let's say. So 8.7 years. Our second example here is we know that we want to double in six years, and we want to know the interest rate. So in this case, we're going to have 2p equals p e to the uh, rt, and t is 6, so 6r power. So when we divide here by p again, we get 2 equals e to the 6r power. Now remember, we could take the log of both sides, but if I show the other method, we're going to convert this to a logarithm function. So this would be log base e. And the 6r and the 2 change places, so we're taking log base e of 2 equals 6r. Now remember, log base e is the same as the lin. And we would be dividing by 6. So the interest rate would need to be, let's calculate here, we've got to calculate 
uh, ln of 2 divided by 6. And we get a interest rate of 0.116, which would be 11.6%. So again, we're using solving exponential equations here to solve for exponents in the compound interest formula. So now let's move to logarithm equations. Uh, now this says for ln equations, but it's really any kind of log equations. Uh, we may need to, if there's more than one log in the expression, to condense it to a single log using our exponent properties. And we want to get the log by itself, and then we're going to convert it to exponential form and solve for x. Now, since the domain of the log function is limited, meaning we can't take the log of negative numbers or zero, there's a possibility by doing this method we will get extraneous answers, just like when we solve the square root functions. So we have to check and eliminate any extraneous answers. So our first example here, we have this logarithm equation here. Now we only have a single log, so we don't need to condense. So we want to get that by itself. So I need to subtract 3 from both sides. And gives me this, and then I'm going to divide by 2. And we get this expression. Now we're going to convert that to exponential form. So remember this is log base e of x. That's what ln of x is. That's the abbreviation. So base e. And remember the 2 and the x change places. And then we could just calculate. Now this is a positive number, so we're not going to run into any issues with extraneous answers. So if this number comes out to be 0 or negative, then you're going to have to eliminate it as an extraneous answer. Let's look at our final example here. Now in this one we have more than one log, so we have to use our logarithm properties to condense that. So the logarithm, two logarithms added, is equivalent to a single logarithm of those expressions multiplied together. So we could multiply those together. So we've got x squared minus 3x. And now we're going to convert it to uh, a exponential function. Now remember this is a common log, so our base is 10. So if we write this as a exponential function, this would be 10. And then remember, these two things change places. So 10 to the first equals x squared minus 3x. So we have a quadratic equation because this is 10. So we want to set the quadratic equation equal to 0. And now we can solve using factoring if possible, which will work on this one, or quadratic formula. So here, this factors into x minus 5 times x plus 2. And using our solve by factoring, we set each factor equal to 0, and we get two possible answers. That's a negative 2 there. Now, if we put negative 2 back in up here, I'm going to be taking the log of a negative 2, and that's undefined. So this answer is extraneous, so I've got to throw it out. And we can verify the 5. So we would have log of 5 plus log of 5 minus 3 is 2 equals 1. Now we could just pull out the calculator and check that. Or we could use our logarithm properties. That would be the log of 10 equals 1. And we know that the log base 10 of 10 is 1. So we get 1 equals 1. Checks out. Or again, we could have pulled up our calculator, log of 5 plus log of 2, and press Enter, and we get 1. So it checks out. So we've talked about, on this unit, solving exponential functions and logarithm functions. And remember, logarithm functions have the possibility of these extraneous answers. So don't get caught by. Uh, not eliminating the extraneous answers. Have a great day. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready?